What is up, party peeps? This is the KN Chaos Show, episode 31. I am your host, Keenan Lafferty, and today we are going to be doing a tutorial on drawing faces in a three quarters view, as well as a little quick tip on how I do line art. Today, like I said, is a beautiful day, February 18th, I believe. Let's see. Yes, February 18th. It is a beautiful Saturday morning here. Uh, three day weekend coming up. We got President's Day on Monday. And that is a well-deserved break for myself, and it gives us plenty of time to relax before going back to work. So, yes, before we go into our tutorial, I want to talk about, obviously, the same things we talk about every week, the Twitter. Thank you for all of you who have been following me, allowing me to bug you and let you know when the new episodes are going live. Thank you to everyone who has been posting their amazing stuff on the Facebook. Uh, I got Valentine's stuff in here, Art of Revelry stuff, and this is just so cool. And speaking of the Art of Revelry, I highly encourage all of you to go to DeviantArt. If you haven't already, type in Art of Revelry and take a look at all the amazing, freaking amazing submissions that are in there. I absolutely love these. So I cannot wait to take a look at all of these and, you know, get the contest underway. I, I forget when the actual deadline is. I think it's coming up pretty soon. So if you haven't submitted to the cool contest already, submit your stuff. And yeah, you could win some awesome prizes. I think we're like giving away Alienware laptops and stuff. So yeah, definitely don't want to miss out on the chance to do that. So with all that out of the way, we are going to be going into our tutorial. So let us get started, shall we? So I trust that all of you had a good week. Mine was quite nice. Went by quite quickly. And yeah, it's good to be good to be the weekend. So let us get started. As usual, we're going to be creating our layer on top of our background. And we're going to be picking our sketching color. So let's go kind of like a dark gray. So if you remember the last face tutorial. Basically I'm going to be expanding on that and now we're going to be taking what we drew straight on and tilting it to the side and pretty much discovering and plotting out the planes of the face to help you properly show off depth and stay away from some common mistakes that I always used to make and I'll tell you about those. So, first thing you're going to want to do is let me draw in kind of your oval shape and is this thing going to work? Come to us! There we go. Why is it so laggy? No laggy. There we go. All right. So we've got our head in here, right? This is our chin. You're going to want to draw up the center line of your head, right? Now, halfway down is going to be the eye line. So that's going to be right around here. And make sure when you draw that halfway point, you take your fingers. Usually, I take my fingers and I just put them against the screen. And when you're drawing it at kind of this angle, down like this, or rather this angle, uh, you don't want to go like halfway between because that would put your eye line kind of up here. You want to think of it as like this plane of the face. Like if you were drawing this head on, you know, like almost think of it as a box, you know, like this. Halfway between that box as opposed to halfway between this point and this point, which would be here. So that's mistake one. Make sure you stay away from that, because I used to make that mistake sometimes. So do not do that, or you will be chastised. So, you got your eye line. That's part one. Second part is you want to figure out where your nose and your mouth are going to go. So, an easy way to do that is think about uh, going down. And this is where we move into tip number two. Make sure you don't just go down like on this egg shape type thing and just be like okay well the nose goes there you know and then and then later on you draw on the nose like that and it's kind of like this thing stuck onto this egg shape you know what I mean like most of the time what you want to do is it's okay to do that but what, what's gonna end up happening is as you go into painting it's gonna make the face look really flat. It's gonna be almost like as if I took my nose and kinda of like stuck it in on top of like, it's, gonna, it's not gonna come out far enough. It's gonna look weird. So, what you wanna do is keep in mind 
that the nose is actually on a plane of its own. And this is the way that I like to think of it. If, the, if I were to take a line from my chin to the tip of my nose, you can see that my lip just barely touches it. So you want to keep that in mind. So this is like plane one. It comes up like this. So imagine this line is this line here. This is going to be the tip of your nose. It's going to go in, right? This is the bridge going back. And then once you hit here, it's going to go up. So that's your brow line. So if we were to draw almost like a, a line straight through this, see that's not, it's no longer an egg shape. Now we're seeing the planes and the depths of the face. And that is what you want. So now you can say, okay, so the bridge of the nose comes out like this. The nose comes down like that. And this is an easy way to draw a nose. You kind of come down like that. You draw in that simple shape, right? Then you draw in the underside pretty much like the nostril and everything like that see so this is almost going to be shaded in like that and then the nostril is like that see it's an easy way to draw a nose and then later on you'll just paint it and that's an easy way to just see where the nose is going and it just looks nice and simple I try not to draw in like this shape too heavily especially on girls just because it adds like I heard they say I've heard it said that every line you add on a girl's face when you're drawing it can add age to it, especially when you're doing like a simplified sort of like comic anime style. So you want to think about this line coming down, right? And you think of like this little dimple thing right beneath the nose. So it's about like about like that, right? And you're gonna to want to also draw this mouth on this perspective line, right? So think of it like that. And because it is in perspective, the lip is going to wrap around the face like this, right? And what I'm doing here is I'm putting extra, uh, I'm basically just drawing in the top lip by like adding these little shapes. This is a very kind of comic book thing to do. And then you also want to think about how the second lip kind of comes out. It doesn't, it doesn't just go like this. It doesn't just go like that. It actually has volume to it. It will actually come out like that. So the side of the lip will take on more of that shape. And then for the bottom of the lip, I just draw that little shadow, like right there, that it creates. And then I erase that line. So there you go. That's that's the beginnings of drawing in your lip. And really, I mean, there, there's all kinds of ways, like you'll look in books of how you lay out exactly how low the nose goes and exactly how low you know the lips go and everything and I think I said it in the last tutorial that I almost try to stay away from that because I feel like it's not only too much measuring but not everybody has the same face so if you measure it out like exactly how low the nose goes every time your faces are gonna start to look all the same and that's never a good thing you don't want to be one of those artists that draws girls where all their faces look the same. You want each one of them to have their own cool characteristics and all look, you know, attractive and pretty, but at the same time not all look like the same Barbie face. It's like molded and then stuck on top of like a, a torso with a neck. <laughs> so, alright, so we're moving into the eyes now. So the easiest way for me to remember how to do eyes is you want to know where to start the eye. So an easy way to do that is thinking of this plane, right? There's a plane that goes from your jawbone down to your chin. So you want to think about that, right? So if we draw from the chin up to the jawline, like that, right? And again, this is all kind of just thrown on there. Like, you could make it a wider jawline, and that changes the look of the character entirely. But you can do that. Go back like that. Jawline will come up like that. So this is plain, whoa, I guess we can call this plain one. So, okay, back to figuring out where to start the eyes. What you're going to do is you're going to take this line from the nostril and draw it up like this, right? You're going to draw it up as if we're going back into space. We're going to be heading towards like the little eye hole divot. The orbit hole, I guess you could say. And because this plane is actually pushed back a little bit, like as if 
see like that? Like if we were to draw two squares, this line is going back like that. So because of that, this line, the center line, is actually going to be moved back a tiny bit just because of the way that we're looking at it in perspective. So the eyes are now going to be slightly a bit higher. So keep that in mind. Also, another easy way to remember where to start the eye is we're going to be starting from the tear duct. So the tear duct is like if you take a look at your own face and you draw a line right from where the plane changes from your nose going up to your forehead, you draw a line just kind of across, you go down your nose and then right into your tear duct, right? So we're going to do the same thing on our model. Go right from the nose, down the bridge, and right to the tear duct. Here's where we're going to start our eye. Then, because we're in perspective, you see if I turn my head, the, the bridge of my nose actually covers up almost my entire tear duct. So, you, you want to think about that. If this is going back into space, the other tear duct is actually going to be right around there. So, let's begin by drawing the easy eye, which is the one right here. So an easy way to remember to do this is you sort of draw on your eyelids, right? Draw on your one eyelid like this, right? And then for the bottom eyelid, a really easy way to get this right is, and again, the eye can be all kinds of different sizes, shapes. You can make them a little smaller, a little bigger. Again, it's all going to add to your character. And I encourage you to experiment with different sizes. I've kind of just got like a fairly rule of thumb size, so you can copy mine if you'd like. But there's not one way, not one perfect size that it needs to be. And then also, once you draw in the eye, you can actually lasso it and change it from there, which I'll show you as well. But I digress. Back to drawing the bottom eyelid. Back to drawing the bottom eyelid. So the easy way to do this is you think about the eye, right? And it's not just a sticker, right? It's not like it's a pasted on sticker on the face, right? There's actually the eyeball underneath it, right? So like this is going to be here, underneath the eyelid, right? So when you draw that in, you're almost going to want to take that edge, depending on how wide they have their eye open, and sort of think about the edge of the eyeball and how it kind of will collide with the eyelid. And, I'll show, and this comes into play really over here because a lot of times people will tend to take this shape and draw the same shape, but just kind of squished, and that doesn't end up looking right. And that's because of the eyeball is actually a shape here. See, and it comes up, and then it hits the tear duct. But before we go into that, and you can see how I'm kind of like going in and sculpting. Here, let me go in a little bit closer. You can see how I'm actually sculpting these lines, almost. Like, I'll draw it in, and then I'll come back in with my eraser. And I'll erase it kind of very, very slightly. You'd be amazed at how much slight changes on the facial features can change the, not only the character, but the expression of the character as well. So uh, once you draw in the eye, the eyelid comes up like that. And you just draw a line like that. And then what you can do is once that asset is there, you can lasso it and say, OK, I want to move it over just a tiny bit. You can make it a little bigger or a little smaller. Make it a little bit smaller. Let's go for a little bit more of a realistic look as opposed to a comic anime. And then what I like to do is when I erase my guidelines, I'll erase this one because you don't want that one. But this one, I'll actually kind of sketch in with like the little anime, um, the little anime blush lines just to kind of show, it kind of hints that that's where that line kind of comes together and it goes up towards your nose. And I like it. I like it. So, part two. Drawing the eye over here. Now this is very, very interesting. And I will make sure to actually go in close on this one. Now let's actually go this close. So a lot of people tend to take this shape and be like, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to draw that same shape, right? Like that. Like, like that, right? And then it, that looks okay, but you have to think about it in terms of 3D space. Again, remember, there's an eyeball in here. So the eye is actually going to be like this, right? This eyelid is going to follow here. It's going to curve around like this, right? Eyelash, eyelash there, eyelash there. Almost draw a line across 
that perspective line. And then this bottom eyelid is going to go like that. Think of it almost as like hugging the edge of that, that sphere right there. And then the edge of the eye is going to be showing right here. And then again, I'm going back in and sculpting, right? I'm raising the eyelid a little bit, seeing how that looks. And that is looking about right. So you can see that is not that shape because you're seeing this eyeball in a completely different perspective. I'm going to erase this, erase that, uh, eyelid there. So bam, there you go. And when in doubt, always flip your canvas. And I, I'll have to go into a quick tutorial on how to, because I have mine set to a hotkey where I can quickly flip it. It has to do with using your actions and stuff. If you Google how to set up a hotkey to flip the canvas, I'm sure it can show you how to do it. But uh, I had my friend show me. So um, yeah, I just kind of had it there. And I was like, yay. And then yeah, I couldn't tell anybody else how to do it. So I kind of feel like a noob. But yes, Google is your friend. So give that a shot. And if not, then I will go into it on another another show. I almost call it a daily again. I'm really trying to get away from calling it a daily because I know it's not a daily. So again, sculpting lines. Sculpting lines. This is how I like to do my lines, and eventually I'll eventually I'll end up darkening them. But that is to answer a question later in the show. So, looking at this, I can see that I want to actually move this eye slightly up. So I'm going to lasso that baby. Raise it up a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit bigger, too. And just some slight tweaks. Let's see if that actually... I always like to squint at it, too. You want to pay attention to the shapes you're creating, actually, like the reeds. That's a, that's a big thing. So I always squint my eyes and look at it and just see if it's still giving me the same kind of character that I want out of it. Going up. Yes. OK, so that looks good. Now, for the eyebrows. <sighs> the eyebrows. <laughs> you don't want to just go up and be like, OK, they go there and there, right? Because. Remember, there's planes of the face. You've got this one going back. But once you hit here, it starts going up. This brow line is all going up like that. So you want to keep in mind that what, what would be here on a face-on drawing, what would be here on a face drawing is now going to be over here, right? It's pushed forward because you've got this divot, this eye hole socket thing. And then, as well, this is pushed this way. And look at how those shapes are not the same, because this is going up and wrapping around the brow line. Try to stay away from the symmetry when you're doing three-fourths view. And then what's nice is once you draw on that line right there, this is a good indicator for your, basically, the eye divot. I'm just going to call it the eye divot. And you can shade that in. And that quickly gives you your uh, another plane of the face. And it starts to, see, now you can see the depth. This is what we really want to work for in all of our faces, is this depth. It goes in, and then it comes out, and then it goes back down, right? It's not just this eggshell with, okay, eye here, nose, you know, clown nose, nose here, mouth here, and they're all on this egg shape, you know? It's not like a freaking Mr. Potato Head. We got planes of the face. Planes of the face. Do not forget the planes of the face. So, going back to the cheek line, you don't want to have that line going all the way down, but sometimes it's kind of fun to accentuate a little bit of shadow here. It will put a little bit of age and maturity on your girls, make them look sexy. And so, going up, what we want to do is we're moving into the ear. So, the easiest way to remember how to do the ear is you take the nose line. You come around, bam, one, eyebrow, spin it around the head, two. That's where your ear goes. So you go down, draw in the ear shape, like that. 
And then an easy way to remember to do the ear, and I've always done this. I, I literally sat down one time and I was like, okay, I'm going to figure out an easy way to remember an ear. And I figured out that you can actually remember how to do an ear by doing this. You go to the center point, right? Kind of follow this line up. You make this little dimple thing, right? Then from there, you see how it's like kind of flowing up this way? You draw a line right here. You go C. It's like a backward C. Go up like that. C there. And then from here, you draw another C. C there. And then it goes down a little bit. And then bam. That's the ear hole. And that's an ear. See? So you got this C shape here. And then C there, and then with that little thing. It connects right into that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you draw an ear. So, moving into, uh, let's do some let's see, sculpting. Sculpting more, sculpting more. I kind of want to bring this nose back in a little bit. Uh, let's go into an easy way to figure out how to position your eyes as well. So, let's have her looking to the side, right? So, Sometimes I'll do this thing where I'll draw a quick, like, just a dot, just so I can remember where I want the eyes to look. And once you get that right, you draw the circle around it, right? But also, remember, you're working in perspective. So you don't draw a circle here and then a circle here, like that, right? So even that looks a little funky when that's a circle. Because it's in perspective, what is a circle here will be squished into an oval here. And then I usually do this thing. I kind of do like a semicircle below to indicate the pupil. I'll just kind of shade that in, shade that in. And then your eyelids cast a shadow, a very, very slight shadow over your eyeballs. So throw that in as well. I shade in that iris. How the, the line from the eyelash and how, how it fades into the iris actually if you kind of distort that line like this, it tends to make your girls look a little bit more, I don't know, like pretty, kind of seductive. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but I always like to do that. You kind of blend the line between the eyelash and the iris whenever possible. It's kind of an anime thing to do, but I just kind of took that in. I'm like, yeah, I like that. I'm going to steal that. I also read it in a book somewhere, I think. I was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. So once you got that down, actually, you know what, this could be pushed a little bit more. Because technically, these eyes should be almost on the same plane if they're looking the same way. So let's actually squish this eye a little bit more. Sculpting! Check me out, I'm sculpting. See? Okay, so now these are both looking a little bit more in the right direction. And did you see how little I changed that eye just to barely, like, kick it a little bit more to the right? And then once you got that, you can go back in, erase a little bit. And there's your little highlights. That's nice and thin. And going in, sculpting some more. And the way I like to do lips is eventually when I go in and paint is I'll make like a, a slight like pigment there. And then I'll go back in and erase like a, a specular, make them look shiny. And also when I'm shading, uh, you've got this line here, but if you notice, um, it actually carries on past the lip. Like you have the pigment line, like here. You have this pig pigment line, right? <laughs> I almost said pigment line. <laughs> you have this pigment line, as you can see here. And then, okay, so you have the pigment line, but the actual like lip line continues to go out like this. And then you've got like this little spot of just skin there, right? And you can show that off as much as you want. Again, subtlety is key, especially when you're rendering lovely ladies in Photoshop. So keep that in mind. And I'm bringing that lip in a little bit. Kicking that out. Sculpting! Sculpting, sculpting. Alright, so now you can see our face is coming together quite nicely. Let's flip it back. Oh, by the way, okay. I'm sorry, for those of you who have been following along, um, the easiest way to flip the canvas without the without the hotkey is you have to go to image, rotate canvas, and then flip canvas horizontal. Sorry about that, if you guys are following along. 
Um, so yeah, if you need to go back and yeah, just kind of skip through and catch up. So anyway, but I hope you guys knew how to flip the canvas already. But if not, I take full responsibility for that. So now we can flip it back and we can see, yeah, you know, this is looking pretty right. It's looking fine. And you can go back in and you can just kind of just erase stuff too. Like I kind of start to get rid of shapes that I don't want to really be as prominent, like this ridge line. Just get rid of that. Let let the imagination almost fill that in, and then it'll kind of carry through when you start painting and make it. You can make it just as subtle, and it'll make it look nice. So, I believe let's throw some hair on it really quick. <laughs> give her some. Give her some cool emo hair, like me. Let's give her some Keenan emo hair, except girl style. Like that. Let's get rid of that face. Don't want to see that face. Get that out of here. Cool. Think about the hairline. The crown of the hair is back here. Go back up like that. Yeah. There we go. Come back down like that. That jawline. I kind of want to bring that in a little bit. Let's bring it in. Bring that jawline in. Think about the back of the head. The back of the head goes right into the neck. You notice the neck doesn't just go like this. Like, like that's a little too skinny. It looks weird. If you look at my head, see how the back of my head just flows right into my neck and then the jawline is here? I want to do the same thing with this girl. Back of the head is here, flows right into her neck here. And then the front is. All right. Oh, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Like that. And then, in perspective. Since we are working in perspective, we must draw. This is like the trapezius muscle. How it comes out like that. Kind of kick that in a little bit that in. Also remember like this eye line, how it comes down, that cheek line you want to kind of, you want to show that off as much as uh, you feel appropriate, as much as you feel that it communicates your character. And just kind of erase these lines, Let's get this hairline in there. There we go, now our lovely lady has hair. Let's try that in. There we go. Whoop, got a little stubble going on there. Take care of that baby. And this is the little cast shadow underneath the chin. Uh, you can have a cast shadow underneath the nose. But I try not to like kick it down perfectly below because it ends up kind of looking like a Hitler stash. So stay away from that. Kind of kick it off to the side this way whenever possible. Or just very, very slightly um, hint at it. Kind of curl that up a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, some sometimes when the eyes are turned this way, you'll see eyelashes coming off that way as well. This way as well as that way. Kind of want to make her... Like, right now, the jawline is causing her to be a little bit older than maybe I want. And you can always round it off by adding a little bit more, like, roundness to the edge. See what that does? Very, very slight changes will affect your character quite a bit. The slightest of changes. Yeah. Adding roundness, adding a little bit more baby fat, I guess you could say. I don't know. There, see? Now she's actually looking quite a bit younger, just with the roundness that we put to her face. And then you can go back in, shade in the hair and all that stuff, and that's just good old-fashioned fun. So, let's get rid of that. So, hopefully that sheds some light on how to draw a picture of a person in three-fourths view. <laughs> and let me scoot this thing off to the side. 
So, with the tutorial out of the way, oh, also, yes, with the tutorial out of the way, we'll move into, I keep getting questions on how I convert my sketches into my line art, and I'll show you exactly how I do that. So, with all this sculpting that's been going on, right, uh, once I'm satisfied with the sketch, I'll actually go back in to the layer and try to stay away from shading too much like you don't want to shade the hair in black and then do this but once I've sculpted my basic sketch that I like I'll go to my layer that I did my lines on hit control U to bring up the hue shifter panel that over there the hue shifter panel right then what you do is you go to your lightness tab kick it down like that almost to black not all the way to black but pretty close and so that, by itself, cleans up the lines. And then, oh, because you can see I actually painted with gray. You want to be careful when you go back in and you paint with the actual color behind it, because it will darken that and sometimes give you darker colors where you don't want them. But overall, if you do your line art properly, like I should be doing, <laughs> when you go back and darken it, it'll give you these nice uh, dark lines. And then you can go back in, and all it is is just going back in, cleaning it up, sculpting more, go back in erasing, and that is basically how I do my line art. I used to do it where I would sketch, and then I would drop another layer over top of it and re-sketch it. However, the reason why I stopped doing that was because sometimes in the sketch there was like little subtle shadows or just little shapes that I really liked, and then I would lose it when I went and did the lines over top of it. So I was like, I don't want that to happen ever again. So. I went ahead and did that. So going forward, I can see that, you know, I'd actually want to move this up a little bit. Just a tiny bit. A couple pixels. And I actually want to shrink this eye down a little bit. So I'm just going to lasso that. Shrink it down just a tiny bit. And then what I do is I just go in, because sometimes it'll leave these little lines of where you went in. I'll just go in and erase them. You know, just cleaning it up. Getting it ready to go to, you know, like your final line art stage. And then from there, you can go into dropping the color behind it, coloring the lines, and all that stuff, as I have demonstrated before. So, with that out of the way, I will continue working on this while I talk about the question to the audience. So, a lot of people have been asking me about doing live streaming, and that got me thinking. I actually would really like to do live streaming. And I was just curious about how many people would actually be willing to tune into that, as well as what day of the like what day of the weekend is going to work best. Like, would it be cool to say like I'm not going to stop doing these sh the K and Kale show, but also I was thinking, hey, maybe we could do another kind of a cool live stream later on that evening. But I didn't know if I'd always be available, um, and it didn't have to be every weekend either. It could be like you know every now and then, every Friday or so or Saturday or whatever, but I digress. In the comments section, let me know if you'd be interested in a live stream session and what day of the week you would be most willing to look at that, whether it's Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, because we could do some really cool things with that. And yes, I just want to know how many of you would actually be interested in that. So with all that out of the way, I believe that concludes the Kane Kale Show, episode 31. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. I'm Keenan Lafferty, and I will see you guys next time.